Now I've looked at a fair number of P67 and H67 Sandy Bridge Ready motherboards over the last little while, but I haven't looked at many MATX ones. So this is a reasonably high performance looking MATX P67 motherboard supporting all the latest Intel LGA1155 CPUs, that is Core i3s, Core i5s, and Core i7s. It is a P67 chipset motherboard, which means that it does not support the onboard video of these CPUs, but it does support their unlocked performance of the K-series processor, so you can overclock K-series chips on this board. We've got their EPU chip, which is for energy saving. We've got SATA 3, 6 gigabit per second. We've got USB 3.0, UEFI, graphical BIOS, and I think that's pretty much all they've got to say for themselves on the front. Let's see what ASUS has on the back. So their TPU, which is for more performance, EPU, which is for energy savings. Okay, we've got some other stuff here. What do we got? Hmm, SATA 3, Protect 3.0. Uh, which is basically uh, lower power consumption to protect the environment, lower electromagnetic emissions to protect you, and yeah, hold on, I'm thinking, because I don't see it in here. Uh, yeah, something about um, stabilizing power spikes to protect your motherboard. Although I don't think that's here, but that's what Protect the Porno is. AI Suite 2, which is their software, and the EFI BIOS. Let's have a look at the board. Like I said, this looks like a pretty high performance board and comes with what appears to be a pretty high performance package. So, let's see. We've got our user's guide, we've got an ASUS sticker, and we've also got an ASUS software DVD, so throw that away, download the latest from the ASUS website. We've got two SATA 3 6 gigabit per second cables, both of them right angle, and two SATA 2 3 gigabit per second cables, those are both right angle as well. Please note, other than the color difference, there's no difference between those cables. They are both fine. So we've got Q connectors, which are an easier way of plugging in your front panel connectors, as well as your front USB. And this is what made me think this is a performance board, because they got their extra foam padding on the I.O. shield. You only really see that, you know, on higher performance boards from ASUS. It's true, I tell you. Alright, we've got their environmentally friendly packaging, with only paper. Which is good. And we've got a motherboard. Alright, pretty nice looking board overall, actually. I can say that with confidence right off the bat. And, you know, I'm so happy to see more and more of this all the time. PCI Express, for one thing, and high density of PCI Express slots on MATX board. So this board fully supports SLI and Crossfire X. So this one runs its... Okay, you know what, I'll get to that later. Okay, we've got our 1155 socket. Uh, which is compatible, like I said, with all the latest processors. Don't try and put an 1156 chip in there, it will not work. We've got an 8-pin power connector, we've got some pretty nice looking Wave-style MOSFET heat sinks around that CPU socket. They're nice and low profile though, here you can see that from the side. So you shouldn't have any trouble with any of your tower heat sinks or whatever kind of heat sink you want to install on here. We've got four sticks of dual channel DDR3 memory compatibility capability and this is the easy install kind so there's no clip here there's only a clip on this side okay so you just slot the memory in this side open up the clip slot it in this side clip it shut only one clip we've got a memo OK button which should pretty much ensure that your board will boot with any memory no problem okay we've got their TPU switch we've got what on earth is this? I don't trust the platform module, okay. We've got our 24 pin power connector. We've got, hmm. Okay, I don't think this is actually an anti-surge SATA 6 gigabit per second port. I think this is just a SATA 3 6 gigabit per second port. And they're talking about the anti-surge technology that is part of uh, Protect 3.0. Okay, next we have a BIOS chip. Then we've got two SATA 3 6 gigabit per second ports four SATA 2 3 gigabit per second ports, a chipset cooler, and finally we've got our front panel connectors, four USB 2.0 front panel headers, we've got a Firewire front panel header, a, is that really a parallel port header? Fascinating, okay. 
<laughs> and then we've got, aha, okay, we're down to the PCI Express slot. So I love it. They've, they've killed PCI. So this is a high-end board, no PCI. Done. Boom. We've got a PCIe 16X slot that runs at full 16X. PCIe 1X slot that will be covered as soon as you put your high-performance dual-slot graphics card in here. We've got a PCIe 8X slot. So this one only runs at 8X if you put something in it, and then this one will run at 8x as well. So it's either 16x or it's 8x, 8x. So full support for Crossfire and SLI. Remember, PCIe 8x is enough for Crossfire and SLI. This guy right here only runs at PCIe 4x. Actually, hold on, let me look at this. Yes, good. Okay, so this one only runs at PCIe 4x, and that one's running off the Southbridge, not off the PCIe controller on the CPU, so it's lower performance. If you are running Crossfire or SLI, use these two slots. Now what's funny is this board doesn't include an SLI bridge, so you may have to buy one, but they are available, so don't worry too much about it. Remember, Crossfire bridges come with your video card, not with your motherboard. We've got two PS2 ports, one mouse, one keyboard. We've got two USB 3.0 ports, optical audio out. We've got four USB 2.0 ports. We've got Firewire, eSATA, and Gigabit Ethernet with 7.1 audio to round out this board. Thank you for checking out my unboxing of the ASUS P8P67M Pro. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos.